Xenomorphs, the invasion. Chapter 19. We left straight from the mall, hopping a bus out to the gardens, which is clear across the city. On the way, I tried to catch up on my homework. I'd missed a lot of classes that day, so I borrowed a so I borrowed class notes from my friends. Uh, Rachel kept perfect notes. Uh, Tobias had terrible notes uh, with all kinds of little drawings in the margins. Uh, it took a while before I could figure out what they were. They were buildings and people and, ca and cars and the, the way they looked from high up in the sky. I don't really need to go in, Tobias said as we pooled our limit cash to buy as we pooled our limit cash, our limited cash to buy tickets. I'm happy with just my hawk morph. I don't really want to be anything else. I think that's a mistake, Rachel said. Our one real weapon is the power to morph. We should acquire as many useful morphs as we can. What kind of animal morphs are going to be able to deal with this or Visser 3 when he turns into that big mo monster that ate the Andalite, I asked. There was nothing in this stew or any other that was going to kick that big monster's butt. Marco winked. Fleas. No one can kill fleas. We'll itch him to death. I had a smile. I had to smile. So now you're suddenly Mr. Hopeful? No, I'm just so scared I'm getting weird, he said. I haven't done this morphing stuff. You guys all have. I'm not even a full-fledged anamorph yet. I'm still normal. I still feel normal, Cassie said. She, lo <laughs> she looked troubled. Cassie, you can turn into a horse, Marco said. Very few normal kids can do that. It's different for Jake. Turning into a lizard? He's always been a reptile. I took a good-natured swing at Marco, but he dodged it. It was cool having Marco with us, even when, if he was giddy. It took about a half an hour to reach the main gate of the gardens. I climbed down off the bus, feeling nervous. Not at all like I usually felt going there. I mean, the gardens is just about my favorite place to go normally, but normally I'm not going there to get pers personal with dangerous animals. The main part of the garden gardens is rides. They have all the usual stuff like roller coasters, which are my personal favorite, and Ferris wheels and water slides. But they also have an animal part, which is like this whole section where you can get close to some of the safer animals. And this monkey habitat they, ha they have is like a whole monkey city, practically anyway. If I were an animal and I had to be in a zoo, I'd want to be there. Cassie led us to the main building, which holds all kinds of exhibits. It has everything but the really big animals that need lots of space. So those animals are farther out, mostly in big grassy habitats that look like parks, parks with walls and moats and fences around them. The main building is supposed to be like a rain, like a rainforest, I guess. It's where they keep animals that need to be warm all the time. There's a pathway that winds around with tall tropical trees overhead with bushes here and there between the exhibits some of the exhibits are tiny and some are really big like the area they have for otters it has waterfall it has a waterfall a waterfall and a water slide for the others to play in we were near the otter habitat when cassie stopped Okay, now everyone stay together and try not to be too suspicious looking, she said. I'm taking you inside. Inside where, Marco asked. Well, the way it works is there are walkways behind all these exhibits. That's how they feed the animals and give them meds or whatever. Meds are medicines. Sorry, she pointed to an 
in in con, con in conspicuous doorway. Anyway, we can go through here, through there. It was an odd change from outside to inside. One minute we were in this fake rainforest. The next minute we were in what looked like a hallway at school. Only the smell was worse. Kind of damp and moldy and musty. More like the boys' locker room. Okay, if any staff people stop us, the story is we're here to see my mom, Cassie said. Of course it's too late in the after in the after it's so late in the afternoon she won't be here. I hope, because if she founds out I've been dragging four of my friends around back here, well, I can't be saving the world from aliens if I'm grounded. Hopefully these won't be there won't be many staff people here at all. We shuffled along the hallway feeling like we definitely didn't belong, which we didn't. On either side of the main hall, there were paths that led to the different exhibits. Unfortunately, the doorways to the exhibits just had numbers on them. I knew we, we'd have to rely on Cassie's knowledge to find our way around. Behind some of those doors were animals you didn't want to just walk in on. How do you guys feel about gorillas, Cassie said. She had stopped by one of the numbered doors. Uh, this is Big Jim's cage. He just came over from another zoo. So he's in his own private environment for now. He's very gentle. He's very gentle. Slowly it dawned on me what Cassie was saying. Oh, you mean does one of us want to acquire his DNA? That is why we're here, Jake, Rachel pointed out. She batted her, eye, her eyes at Marco. How about you, Marco? Haven't you always wanted to be a big, hairy guy? Marco didn't look like he was crazy about the idea, but I knew how, how to handle him. Maybe Marco should try something easier for his first morph, I said. You know, like a cuddly little koala or something. That did it. Koala, Marco said, giving me a dirty look. Open that door, Cassie, he, hesitate, he hesitated. You said gentle, right? Gorill gorillas are extremely gentle, Cassie said. Then, in a quieter voice, she added, unless you make them mad. Cassie opened her backpack. She took out an apple and handed it to Marco. Here, you just open the door. The way it's set up, the way it's set up, none of the visitors will be able to see you unless you walk clear out in, into the cage. Besides, there's an extra security gate, so we can't just jump out, out, and you can't just walk in. So we just open the door and hope Big Jim feels like eating. Behind the door was a second door of steel bars with a little cute cute cutaway section for the handlers to shove the food through. The entire door opening was concealed behind a fake rock ledge, so it wasn't visible to people looking into the cage. But Big Jim noticed us right away. He climbed heavily down from his perch on a rock ledge and took a good look at us through the bars. Big Jim was definitely big. He had fingers the size of my wrists, but Jim didn't seem to mind us being here. Mostly he seemed interested in Marco's apple. He looked Marco o over, snorted like he wasn't impressed, and then held out his hand. Hand him the apple, Cassie directed. He wants the apple. I loved your work in King Kong vs. Godzilla. Godzilla, Marco told the ape. He stuck his hand through the bars and held out the apple, which surprising, which su with surprising daintiness, the gorilla lifted the apple and began inspecting it closely. Hold his hand, I said. Yeah, right, Marco laughed. When you acquire DNA, the animal goes into a kind of trance, I said. Go ahead, grab it. Grab his hand and concentrate. Marco ten, 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 
tentatively touched the the gorilla's wrist. Nice monkey. Nice monkey. The gorilla ignored him. Big Jim was much more interested in the apple than any than in any of us. Concentrate, Rachel urged. Marco closed his eyes. The ape closed his eyes. This is so cool, Tobias commented. You realize that gorilla could pull Marco apart like he was a paper doll. Look at those arms. Marco opened one eye. Tobias, being terrified, gets in the way of concentrating. So how about if you shut up about his arms? Suddenly, I heard a whirring sound. I looked down the hall, then back. It was one of those electric carts, like a golf court. It was coming toward us. Just act natural, Cassie hissed. Marco slipped out, and, and she slammed the big door on Jim, on Big Jim. The door on Big Jim. As long as it isn't a security guy, we're probably okay. The cart came up to us. The driver was a man wearing a stained tan lab coat over his jeans. In the back of the cart were two large white plastic buckets full of something brown and horrible smelling. Hey, you're Cassie, right? The doc's kid? How's it going? Fine, Cassie said. She waved casually, and the man drove right on past. That was easy, Rachel said. He didn't even seem to care that we're back here. Well, where next, Cassie wondered. We were at a four-way corner. There were blank, white-painted hallways in all directions. An electric golf cart was parked there, too. What are we near, I asked. Cassie thought for a moment. Okay, that walkway leads to the outer exhibits. That one leads to the offices and storage facilities. These two go around the main bu building exhibits. We're close to, let me see them, bats and snakes that way, the jaguar and the dolphin tank that, w that way. Rachel, Rachel start, started down the hallway to her right. Dolphins, I love dolphins. Wait, Cassie said, trotting after her. What are we going to do with the dolphin morph? I think we should go out to to the big exhibits, Marco said. Let's get serious about this. We need firepower. Let's stick together, I said as Marco started down the hall. I reached out to grab him before he got too far away. And that's when the voice yelled, Hey, hey, you! What are you kids doing back here? I saw a guy in a brown uniform. Security, Cassie yelped. Security, Cassie yelped. Oh man, they'll take us to the office into the office. They'll call my mom. I do not want to explain this to her. Split up, I said, trying to sound like a leader. Just like all the, in just like at the construction site, one guy can't get us all. This guy looks like my grandfather, Rachel said. Not like that hork vajur that was after us. You kids, hold on. Oh, man, oh, man, Cassie said with that. She took off down one hallway. Rachel and Tobias went after her. Marco was already 20, y 20 yards down the other hall, the one that led out t to the large exhibits. I ran to catch up. The guard reached the corner. I saw him glance toward Tobias and the girls, and then at me and Marco. I guess Marco and I looked more suspicious because he chose us. Stop, you kids better stop. Let's grab the golf cart, Marco said. Steal a golf cart? If we don't take it, that guard will. Good point. We jumped in the cart. Marco slid behind the wheel. He turned the key, key to on. He looked at me. Just like driving bumper cars, right? Only you try not to hit anything. He put his foot down the pedal, and the electric motor made a whirring sound, and we took off straight towards the wall. Bam! Hey, try stealing, steering, I yelled. We backed up and took off again. We picked up speed, even, even to pull away from the guard. But when I looked back, he was still jogging after us. 
He's going to have a heart attack, I said. Which way? What? Which way? I turned around to face forward. We had reached a T corner. Right, I yelled. Naturally, Marco turned left. I nearly fell out. Almost immediately, we reached another corner. This time, Marco didn't cho- did choose right, and I did fall out of the cart. I hit the linoleum and rolled. Then I was up and racing to catch up to the cart. What are you doing? Marco demanded when he saw me. Quit playing around. I just gave him a dirty look and climbed back in. I think we lost the guard, Marco said. I'm fine, thanks for asking, I said. Just a few bruises, maybe a cracked skull, nothing serious. Where do you think we are? I think we are in the longest tunnel I've ever seen, I said. It was more and more like a tunnel now. The floor was still linoleum, and the walls were still whitewashed. The, the lights were getting more spread out, so you definitely had the feeling you were underground. I wonder if they caught the others, Marco said. Now do you think what? Do you, now do you see why it's crazy to think we can beat the Yerks? I mean, come on, we can barely beat Zoo Security. We haven't beat anyone yet, I said grimly. Look! Way up ahead, there were two guys in brown uniforms. Maybe they don't know who we are, Marco suggested. They might think we're regular employees. Maybe, but not if they get a good look at us, I pointed there's a t- there's a turn off take it we turned at the same time the guards started yelling the side corridor grew narrow too narrow for the golf cart dish it i jumped out i jumped out marco jumped after me we could hear the guards footsteps as they ran down the main tunnel these guys were in better shape than the old man these guys could run the the corridor ended abruptly there were two doors one a little one a little to the left and 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 one a little farther to the right they were labeled p201 and p203 no help at all pick a door marco said i took up a deep breath Door number one. I opened the P201. A blast of fresh air hit me. Sunlight blinded me. I blinked, trying to get my eyes to adjust. The rhinosaur, the rhinoceros blinked, too. Ah! I yelled. Ah! Marco yelled. We jumped back and slammed the door. Wrong door, Marco said. Definitely wrong, I agreed. Hey, you kids, stop right there. The guards were just at the end of the corridor. Gotta try no- door number two, I said. Do it! We opened the door and ran through. There were trees all around us. Trees and grass. We, we were in the shade. Sunlight filtered down through the leaves. Just ahead, the bushes gave way to open grass. Where are we? Marco asked. Like I know? We worked our way through some bushes, keeping a careful eye out in the keeping a careful eye out on the I parted the bushes to get a better look. The people were leaning against a railing at the top of a high concrete wall. They couldn't see us because of the bushes, but they were definitely all staring at something. We're definitely in one of the habitats, I said. Those are people looking at, at whatever is in here with us. I'm just hoping it isn't that rhino. That thing was way, way too big. I don't know. Let's just get away from the door. Those guards will be coming after us any second. But you know, 
in the back of my my mind i was thinking hmm why have why haven't those guards uh, been coming after us Marco and I crawled through the bushes and around the bases of the big trees. We reached a corner of the wall, hidden from all the people above. That is an awfully high wall, Marco observed. That's got to be 30 feet. This is not good. That wall is high for a reason. There's something in here that they don't want to escape. I scanned the wall. There was a steel ladder set into the con concrete about 50 yards away. I guess that's the only way out. Let me ask you something, Marco said. Why haven't the guards come after us? I mean, if this was like the deer and antelope exhibit, they'd come right in, wouldn't they? We have to think, not panic, I said. I am trying not to think about why the guards didn't come in here. I moved back into the shadows of the bushes. Besides, maybe there's nothing in here at all. I squatted down on my haunches. My butt touched something warm. I had a terrible feeling right at that moment. I looked up and saw Marco. Normally Marco was kind of dark. It was kind of a dark tanned face, but this face was white and his eyes were very large. Marco? I said very slowly and very quietly. Is there something behind me? He nodded. What is it, Marco? Um, Jake? It's a tiger.